Hi friends, in this video we're going to talk about how to import or export pandas data frames to an SQLite database. I've already made a video on how to use Python SQLite 3 module to interface with an SQLite database in Python. I will leave the link of this video in the description, you can check it out. So just to recap, SQLite is a file based database. That means data is stored in a single file like a CSV or an Excel file. So a separate database server is not required. And because of this, SQLite is an ideal choice for persisting and sharing data frames in files. So in this video, to view the SQLite database, I will be using a VS Code extension called SQLite. You can also use it in your environment. If you already have a database viewer like dbviewer, you can even use that. But in this video, we're going to use this VS Code extension. By the way, the whole content of this video is present in this blog post. I've given you the notes, source code, examples, etc. in this blog post. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. All right, let's get started. The first thing is how to create data frame from an SQLite query. So to connect to an SQLite database, you need to have a connection object. It's really simple. Use the SQLite 3 module and write SQLite3.connect and the file path of the SQLite database. Here, the file path is data slash iris.db. You can download this iris.db SQLite file from this link given in the blog post. I will also give the link of this iris.db file in the description of this video. So you can download the db file for practicing. So you create a database connection and you have an SQL query. So this SQL query gets some columns called species max petal length by joining two tables. So ultimately it's an SQL query which is returning a table of data which has two columns called species and max petal length. So how do I get this result from an SQL query into a data frame? Just use this read SQL query function of pandas. So write pd dot read SQL query and the first argument would be the SQL query which is this query and the second argument would obviously be the SQLite connection and that's all. You should get the tabular data of the SQL query as a data frame. It's that simple to fetch SQL results into a data frame. Let's try to run this example. So I've got a blank folder and in that blank folder I've kept the data folder and inside that I have the iris.tb file. So let's try to open this folder in VS Code. So let's try to create a new file. I'll just name it index.py. So first I've created a database connection. I have defined an SQL query which will query the database. In fact, let's try to see this database actually. So I'm going to write Ctrl Shift P and SQLite open database. And this is the database file. And now I can see the SQLite explorer here. Let's try to expand the database. And we are actually seeing two database tables. One is the species table and the other is observation table. Let's try to see the species table. Here it's a simple table which has species ID and species name and the observation table contains some columns. So we have actually written an SQL query which will group all these rows by the species ID and will find out the number of samples or number of rows for each species ID and also it will find out the maximum petal length for each species ID. And obviously instead of showing the species ID we have joined this table with the species table so that we can print the species name instead of species ID. So this is how you are getting the three columns as a result of this SQL query. In fact, if you have this SQLite Visual Studio extension, you can even preview this result. I'll just copy this SQL and I can right click on irisdb new query and let's try to paste this SQL and right click run query. You should get a result something like this. There are three species. Each species has 50 samples or 50 rows and this is the maximum petal length for each species. So let's try to see these results in a pandas data frame. So I'm going to say pd.read sql query which is the function you can call to run an sql query and get the result as a data frame and let's try to print the data frame so let's try to run this example and just like we seen while we executed the sql query the same results are populated in the data frame so this is how you can load the results of an sql query into a data frame by using read sql query function all right we've seen an example on how to read sqlite data into a data frame now let's try to see how can I write the data frame data into an SQLite database table. Let's see an example here. First we have created the connection object and then let's try to create a data frame which contains some data. For example here I am having a data frame which has three columns time, temperature and wind speed and each row has some data. So we have two rows here. So just by calling this function to SQL on the data frame you can write the data frame data into an SQLite table. So I have written to SQL and this is the table name. So if there is no table whether data it will be created automatically and the second argument would be the connection and index equal to false means the index of the data frame will not be written into the database table. If you don't write index equal to false 
a new column in addition to these three columns called index would be written into the database table. I don't want to write the index so I have written index equal to false and there is one more important option called if exists. If you write if exists equal to append the data frame rows would be appended to the table. If you write if exists equal to replace all the SQLite table rows would be replaced with the data frame which you are inserting. And if exists equal to fail means if there is a table already present to SQL will throw an error. So these are the three options which you can use for if exists. In this example suppose you are doing some IOT thing and you are trying to insert the sensor data into a table. You don't want to replace the table every time. You want to append the rows to the sensor data table. So you would use if exists equal to append. Just by using 2SQL you can write a data frame data into an SQLite table. Let's try to run this example actually. I already have weather data table. If you want you can drop the table actually. Let's try to create a new query and write drop table weather data. Let's try to run this query. The table is dropped and if you refresh the tables weather data is gone. Now let's try to push some data frame data into an SQLite table. First we have created the connection object and then we have created a sample data frame. It has three rows and three columns time, temperature and wind speed. And to write the data frame into an SQLite table, you just need to write df.2sql, the table name where you want to send the data to, the SQLite connection, and if x is equal to append means the rows would be appended to the table instead of deleting the rows, and index equal to false means index column will not be returned to the database table. Let's try to save this and run this. It has done successfully. Let's try to reload the tables. The weather data table has come into the database. Let's try to run this. And here the three samples are inserted. Let's try to run this sample again. It has run. And if I reload the weather data table, three more rows are ingested. So every time you run the script, three rows would be appended. So now you can get an idea of how to insert rows into a database table from a data frame. So this is one more use case of using data frames with SQLite tables. In this example, I have run an analysis using an SQL query and the results of the analysis would be copied to a data frame and that data frame is being persisted into the database table and I am saying if x is equal to replace that means every time I run the analysis the updated result would be stored in this table. So this is also a common use case of using data frames with SQLite. So we have seen how to read and write data frames into an SQLite database. Now let's try to see a scenario where a table has some million rows and you don't want to create a data frame with million rows. So how can you deal with this problem? You can read the data as chunks or chunk data frames from a large database query. For example, there is a table called observation in this iris.db database. It has something like 150 rows. Just for demonstration purpose, let's try to read the data in chunks of 60 rows. So how can you do that? You can write SQL if you want with a for loop, but there is way easier method. You can just write pd.readsql query and then mention the chunk size as an additional argument. This will return an iterator of data frames. So you can iterate on each data frame chunk and process the data frame. Well if you want to do some summarizing operation like you want to calculate average of a column on million rows, you can read that in chunks, calculate the average of each chunk and at the end you can do the average of all the chunks. You can split your processing in smaller chunks something like that. So just by mentioning chunk size, you can have an iterator of data frames which are chunks of data returned from the SQL query. Let's try to run this. So first we'll create an SQLite connection. Since it returns an iterator, you can iterate it in a for loop. So I'm going to say for df chunk in this pd.read query and then in the for loop you can do whatever you want. So here I'm just printing the data frame chunk size and the data frame chunk itself. So let's try to run this and the for loop has run. Let's try to see the for loop iterations. The first chunk was of size 60 and the whole data frame is looks something like this. And the second chunk was of size 60. The whole data frame looks something like this. And the third chunk was of size 30 because the whole table size was only 150. So in the first two chunks you got 60, 60, 120 and in the third chunk you got 30. So all the rows are returned in chunks of 60. So using this chunk size argument, you can fetch data frame as chunks and this can be useful for processing queries which return a lot of rows. And the next thing is how to do parameter substitution 
while querying the data. Let's see an example here. You are selecting the maximum sepal length from observations where species ID equal to some number. Instead of specifying the number here, you can give it as an SQL query parameter and you can substitute this parameter while executing the query. Well, this is important to avoid SQL injection. Suppose you are using this script in some Python web server which is taking inputs from the users, you have a huge risk of SQL injection and that's why parameter substitution should be used. You can have named parameters something like this. You can say species ID equal to colon SID and this SID should be provided as a parameter to the SQL. So this is how it's done. You can write pd.readSQL query and you should provide an additional input called params and this should contain the dictionary of the parameters to be supplied to the query. So here only one parameter is required SID. So I written SID is one and that's all. This is how you can do parameter substitution while querying the data. So let's try to run this and you have a parameter colon SID. Let's try to supply this parameter while fetching the data. So you write pd.readSQL query, the query, the connection object and the params dictionary which will contain the parameters supplied to the query. We want only SID, so I have written SID is 1. And let's try to run this. You got the result max sepal width as 7. So if I say species ID is 2 and run this, the maximum sepal width is 7.9. So this is how you can do parameter substitution while doing the SQL queries. And let's try to see some other useful query options. So while fetching data using pd.readSQL query function, Suppose your database table also has the data frame index in it. You can make that index column as the data frame index also by providing the index column input to the PD read SQL query method. And one more important option is parse states. Suppose your query results contain a date time column. By default, it will be written as a string. But you can parse the dates while fetching the data itself by using this parse dates input to the read SQL query command. Let's see an example. You should give this additional input parse dates and it will be a dictionary which will mention the column name which is being written and the format of the date time in that column name. Suppose the query result provides a column called time and the time string format is something like this. Then the result column in the SQL query would be a date time column. You don't need to parse it separately from string to date time. And if the date time column written by the SQL query has this exact timestamp format, you don't need to give the format. You can just say the column name. If it has some different format other than this, you can use this method to provide the format which has to be parsed by the data frame. So let's try to run this example. So let's try to run the SQL query without any parse dates input. And let's try to see the column types. So here in this weather data table, you got three columns, time, temperature and wind speed. And if you run this example, the data types is time, which is an object, temperature, which is an integer, wind speed, which is a float. You can see the time string format in this time column. So let's try to write the time string format to fetch the time column as a date time. So in the parse dates input, I'm going to do the column name as time, which is being fetched from the database. And the format of the column was this. So let's try to save this and run this. Now while printing the column types of the data frame, you can see the time is date time 64 and not an object type. That means the time column is being returned as a date time object instead of string. So this is one more convenience function for parsing the date times directly during the query. So that's it guys. This is how you can import or export Pandas data frames to an SQLite database. We have seen how to read data as a data frame from an SQLite database. We have seen how to write a data frame data into an SQLite database table. We have seen how to read data frame as chunks for large data queries. We have seen how to do parameter substitution while querying the data from SQLite database. And we have seen some important query options like index column and parse states to parse dates directly during SQL query. I have also given the links to the official documentation to the two functions read SQL query and to SQL. Please check out the documentation where you can find much more options of using this function. You can see I have created a blog post on importing and exporting pandas data frames to an SQLite database. I have given the notes and the code so that you can copy paste and practice it in your own computer. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Please ask questions or post your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.